I get so many phone calls these days and text messages saying, Lauren, I need one of your pep talks. So I thought to myself, you know what? I should start putting my Lauren pep talks on YouTube as well. I have done a lot of work and a tremendous amount of work on myself over the last six years. For the first 35 plus years of my life, I constantly was seeking approval from other people. I was full of negative self-talk, full of self-loathing. I was scared of other people's reactions to me. So you know that saying, we all we all see it on Instagram, don't uh, dull your sparkle or don't dull yourself to fit in. I was the queen of that. And it was from little things I picked up here and there as a child and going into my teenage and adult life. And it was these horrendous limiting beliefs I had and a real negative view of myself that I needed to unlearn so I could really step into who I truly am. So today I'm going to share with you tips and tricks on how to really start valid, be self-validating, to stop seeking approval from others, to realize it doesn't matter, you don't need it, and to hopefully help you step into this incredible mindset I'm in right now. I am so full of love for myself. I'm obsessed with myself in all the positive ways, not in a, you know, narcissistic way or anything like that, but I just feel like I'm constantly radiating positivity and I'm uplifting those around me. I'm constantly uplifting myself and it feels so good. So I want you to feel like this too, because I I think that there's just not enough of us walking around on this planet that are radiating that self-love that we all need to have. And maybe you're gonna be doing some of the things I'm mentioning today. And so it's something that you can just start working on on your day-to-day -day life to unbreak these bad habits and to pick up some new ones that's really going to help you to shift into that woman that you've always meant to be because she's in there and she is waiting to come out. Hi, my name is Lauren O'Connell and I am the beauty editor at Cosmopolitan Middle East Magazine. I live in Dubai. I've been here for 15 years. I'm originally from Milford, Connecticut, USA. I'm a mom of two. I have a 14 year old daughter and a 12 year old son. And I was determined to break these generational curses so I don't project this garbage onto my daughter so she grows up full of self-love, full of self-appreciation, full of self-validation, and feeling like she doesn't need to rely on anyone else to tell her who she is. And I wish that that was done for me. You know, my I, I believe my parents tried their absolute best. I know they did. And it was in the 80s when I grew up. Things were different back then. But I had a real big just weight on my shoulders for the longest time and I didn't even know I was carrying it around. So this new mindset I have, this new outlook on life, it's changed everything. And I now realize I can bring anything I want into my lived experience. I deserve it and I am ready to accept and receive it. You know, growing up, my mom always said to me, don't inconvenience anybody. When someone asks you if you want something, say no, even if you really want it. I remember being in college and I had this girlfriend. She was um, she was from another country and her dad actually worked for the UN. And he had flown in to the US and she and I went to New York City to meet him. And we went to all these different shopping malls and he was buying her tons of clothes and perfume and makeup. And he kept saying to me, do you want anything? And I was like, no, no, no. But inside I was dying to have, I remember it was the Ralph Lauren Ralph perfume. And it was a hard candy nail polish and a bunch of other things. And it was because my mom always said to me, say no, don't be an inconvenience. Don't be a burden to anyone. And I remember that my friend's dad said to me, are you sure? Are you sure? And because he came from a culture that was very different or came from a mindset that was very different. And you know, that always stuck on me because I was really blocking all my blessings without realizing it. If you say no, if you put a no out there, if you put negative self-talk out there into the universe, 
you're going to get back exactly what you put out. And so while I was blocking my blessings, the blessings were, they weren't coming as much anymore. They weren't coming for me. I was always saying no when I really wanted to say yes. And it's not just that. There were so many things I did growing up. And it's been a great life lesson for me because not only am I able to step into my power now, but my intention, my hope is that I can help you to step into yours because us women need it. We need to stick together. We need to lift one another up. And the more that we do that, the better this planet is going to be. So how to seek your own self val how to seek your own validation i've written down my notes so if you see me look down it's just because i want to make sure i hit everything but first and foremost treat yourself like your own best friend think of how you treat your best friends or your your sisters or anyone that you love in your life and then think about how you treat yourself are you treating yourself like your best friend for the longest time, I didn't, and I always put myself actually on the back burner for my friends. I was all about the self-sacrifice, and I I never treated myself all that well, and I didn't hold myself in such a high regard. And, you know, a lot of that came, I think, from when I was a child, when people told me I was a certain way, I believed them, and I just didn't feel like I was very special or I didn't feel like I was very valuable. I didn't feel important. And so I just put everyone else on a pedestal other than myself. And so when I realized that it was time for me to be my own best friend, that changed the game. I started making choices that were first and foremost best for me. And it was hard to do that. It was hard to step into that that frame because I had never been there before. I was always making the choice that was better for someone else. So really becoming my own best friend and saying to myself, you know, I did a really good job getting up early this morning, going to the gym, coming back home, getting some writing done, and I deserve to have the next 30 minutes just to relax. Whereas before it would be, well, okay, I have this period of time and I need to do this and this and this for someone else. I stopped doing all that. I chilled out and I said to myself, you know what? You would tell any one of your friends that they need to take a break, that they're doing so much, they're doing so well. Why aren't you telling that to yourself? So I really changed how I looked at myself. And I said to, I said, Lauren, it's time to be your own best friend. And I've actually truly become my own best friend. I love just hanging out with myself, being by myself, and I love my own company. And that's something that I think a lot of us women lack. You might see women that are always, or men, but they're always want to be around other people. And I feel like when that happens, they have a real disconnect from themselves when they don't want to spend that time by themselves. There's things that they're just avoiding dealing with. And for me, that was when actually, when I made that choice to become my own best friend, it really created the space within my life where I could start working through a lot of the issues that I realized I had accumulated over the years, issues that I wanted to get rid of. And they all circled back to self and really just seeking approval from other people. Set boundaries and commit to holding them. So... This is a great example. The other day, one of my girlfriends, I love her to death, she called me and my birthday's coming up at the end of the month, I'll be 41. And she called me and she said, Lauren, I booked something for your birthday and it's gonna be at nighttime on your birthday, so make sure you don't have anything planned. Now, during that time, that's when I would always be with my family, my husband and my kids, and we would probably go out to dinner and have a little celebration. This has happened to me several times in the past where friends have booked things on my birthday and I always say to my family, oh, you know what, we'll just celebrate my birthday the day after. And my husband will say, okay, okay. And I knew my daughter would be so disappointed because she is, we're very close, we're very tight. And I know she wants to celebrate my birthday with me on my birthday. And we've been talking forever that we're gonna get more piercings on her ears. And she wants to get these forever bracelets. They're bracelets that are actually, um, how would you describe it? They're, the metal is, I guess you could say singed. So the bracelet doesn't come off. It's just there forever until you cut it off. So. 
She's been wanting to do that with me forever. And she just had all these plans for our birthday. Now in the past, I wouldn't want to upset that friend. So I would do some more self-sacrificing or sacrificing of the family. And I'd say, okay, well, let me just work around it. I can try to make everybody happy. But this year I was like, you know what? Things are different. And I love my girlfriend and I love the fact that she wants to do something special with me on my birthday, but that day is actually reserved for my family to celebrate with me. So I told her, and that might seem really simple, but in the past I wouldn't have held that boundary and now I did. I'm just gonna quickly turn on my AC. Sorry about that, I am a, uh... I'm sweating here. It's, you know, living in Dubai, it's whew, it's hot. And I turned off my AC earlier because my room was so cold. There's no happy medium with my AC. So I got very, I, I could feel myself starting to sweat. You could actually see it, <laughs> sorry about that. But I could feel myself just sweating sitting here and talking. But you know, really holding on to those boundaries. I recently went through this, this, interesting experience. It was during the month of September last month where I was just coughing nonstop for three weeks. And I have a spiritual coach that I talked to and she's sort of a future version of me. She's probably about 20 years older than maybe a little bit less. And, but she's, she's been through a lot of what I'm going through. And I told her, I was like, I can't stop coughing. And I feel like it has to do with my throat chakra. And she said, yes, it's opening up. It's really opening up. And she said that when she went through it, she lost her voice for three weeks. But for me, I was coughing for three weeks. But I just feel I have this sort of F you mentality now and not in the way where I go around saying that to people or thinking it, not at all. But I'm just, I'm in this mode now and I'm just not dealing with any BS anymore. And it is, it's amazing, it's so freeing. And if you grew up always having to be the good girl get the good report card, be the per perfect friend, be the perfect everything, you can imagine just how, how limiting that was and how good it feels to really just step into your own power and to say what you mean and you can do it in a very kind way. It doesn't mean you have to be nasty, but you know, this throat chakra opening, Oh, what a gift I've gotten. So setting boundaries and commit to holding them. If something doesn't feel right with you, it's a no. If it's not, I've heard this saying before and I love it. If it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And that's just how I'm choosing to live my life. One of my friends recently said to me, you are going into CEO mode and I feel like I am. And I'm doing it with compassion and love, but I'm just not putting up with anyone's S-H-I-T anymore. Just, it's not gonna be part of my life. And you know what? It shouldn't be part of yours because you are just as worthy as anyone else out there in the world and you don't need to put up with anyone's garbage. You need to put yourself first and foremost so you're well taken care of so that you can then take care of the people that need you, your children, your family members, uh, things for your job, anything like that. And that's what's truly important. So no more BS. Make your boundaries if it doesn't feel like it's aligned with you, with your beliefs, with the way you wanna live your life, with anything like that. Hold on to those boundaries and be firm. Spend less time scrolling and follow people in content, follow only people in content that inspire you. If you're on Instagram and you're scrolling through and you're seeing women that look incredibly fit and like they have the best life ever and it makes you just feel so terrible about your own life, unfollow them. Honestly, unfollow them. And I will tell you, being in, I've been a blogger slash influencer. I despise the word influencer, but I've been doing this for quite some time. And also I work in media, so I see every side of it. And I can tell you, most of those pictures are edited like crazy. The people behind them have the same issues, the same problems, the same dramas as everyone else. And what you're seeing is a curated snapshot of a person portraying a certain life. And I know, I know a lot of very glamorous influencers and they're beautiful women. They have great figures, but they also have a lot of other stuff going on that you just, you, 
you project this this idea that they have a better life than you they have you know anything more than you trust me they don't we at the end of the day we still all have the same insecurities to work through we have the same karmas to work through we have the same lessons to learn and you're only seeing a very curated version of them on their Instagram feed. Instead, why not follow people that really inspire you? Women who make you feel like, you know what? She's onto something. This makes me feel good. And I want to learn more of what this person is talking about. I want to hear more of what they have to say. Follow uh, pages that are very uplifting in terms of different quotes or you know stepping into your power type content that's what i love to follow i also really like to follow animal pages i just i love animals and i love to follow pages where animals are treated well and they're in the wild and they're just in their natural habitats i think that they're beautiful and that's where they should be and so to me that really uplifts me you know, I, for a long time, was following a lot of accounts where I would see it and I would think, oh my gosh, she got another new car. Like, that's amazing for her, but I, there's no way we can buy another car, a new car for at least like the next three years. And I would feel kind of bad on myself. Like, what am I doing wrong? But what I didn't realize is that the girl buying the car is actually in a lot of credit card debt. And so it's just more debt that's being added onto it. And she's buying that car and putting it on Instagram for Instagram. You know, she's not putting that, she's she's putting that car there so you can see that she bought it. Maybe she didn't buy it. Maybe she leased it for a day. I mean, this kind of stuff happens. So just follow things that really inspire you. Follow inspirational content and inspirational people. And it's gonna really change the, what you're consuming and what you're allowing into your own life experience. And it's going to raise your frequency and raise your vibration. You'll feel a lot better and you won't be consuming fake garbage. Honestly, you just won't be. And let me tell you, I, I love to see women winning. I love to see women thriving. It's, it's one of my purposes in life is to really support other women and help awaken others by sharing my own light. And so I would never talk down about anyone. If you if your thing is the material thing and you're able to accumulate all this stuff that makes you happy, I'm happy for you. I'm just saying whatever you see on there is not necessarily always real. You don't know the story behind it. Prioritize your needs and take them seriously. How many times have, if you're a mom, have you put your needs on the back burner you skip the gym workout, skip the meditation, skip X, Y, and Z just so you could do something for your kids or do a little bit, get caught up on the laundry or you know, cook a healthy meal because you saw someone on Instagram who feeds their kids you know, the most amazing meals every single night and you stop prioritizing your needs. And when we, we can't, what's that saying? You can't pour from an empty cup. And I was an empty cup for a really long time. And actually, I remember when I was dating my husband, I always prioritized his needs because I wanted him to approve of me. How ridiculous was that? He had a lot of unlearning to do because then when I started really step into my power, he was like, who is this woman? And I just thought, you know what, I'm done. I'm prioritizing me now. And he's luckily, he's a very laid back, introverted type of guy. So. And he's, you know, he's down for the ride, but, uh, you know, you have to put yourself first and foremost. And it's not always easy to do, especially if you grew up in that type of family where you are always expected to really help out and put everyone before you, which is how I was. I was always taking care of my younger brothers. I was the one doing the housework and I was doing all these things, but I never was also taught how to really, I was just very disconnected from my inner self, my true self. And I, I never knew how to connect to that. I was never taught how to connect to that. And honestly, I wasn't taught it because my mom didn't know how to connect to her true self. And my dad definitely did not know how to connect to his true self. And I think that's also just a symptom of the times. But you know, Things are different now and going forward, we're going to change things and we're going to move the mountains that our parents couldn't. And prioritizing our needs is not selfish. 
it's healthy and it's something that we all deserve to do. It is our divine birthright. What else do I have? Pay attention to your own feelings. So that's something also I never did. My feelings weren't as important as anyone else, weren't, everyone else's feelings were more important than mine. When I was a kid and someone would insult me, especially, oh gosh, in those teen years, instead of me just throwing it right back at them and being like, what the heck is wrong with you? I, I not only was nice to them because I didn't want to hurt their feelings, but I believed what they said to me, which is wild, that's crazy. But you know, when I would tell my mom about this or anyone else, they would just say, oh, you know, don't be rude or don't, don't say anything back. Actually, I do remember one time there was this, this guy that lived across the street from us. He was about four years older than me. He was always pressuring me to have sex with him, which I, ugh, disgusting, no way. I was not that, I just wasn't that type of, of teenager. I was of age, I will say, I was of age, but he, he was just disgusting. And I remember he came over one day and he told me that I came from a budget family. And I was like, what does that even mean? But I knew he was insulting me. So I insulted him back. It was literally like the one time I did it. He went back to his house, told his mom, his mom called my mom, and then my mom yelled at me. <laughs> now it's ridiculous, but it was, this was the way that life was. This is how I was meant to be. And when I did step out of line, it came back to bite me. And that really not only created so many limiting behaviors, uh, beliefs within me, but it validated everything that I had been taught up to that point. And I really believed anything anyone told me. I really did because I just didn't know how to develop my own character and be my own person. I didn't know how to approve of myself. I was always seeking approval from others. With that being said, with that guy pressuring me to have sex, I, I did have a boundary there where I said to him, no way, F off. But you know, Thank God I did that too, because if I if I had allowed that to happen, that would have been 10 times worse for me. But that, that was one boundary I was always able to really hold throughout my entire life. Stay the hell away from me. I think even then, I probably understood energies to the point where I knew that I did not want certain energies that intimately close near me. Oh, disgusting. So stop chasing what doesn't feel aligned. And oh gosh, I wish I knew these things when I was younger and even in my 30s, I was constantly chasing things that weren't aligned, constantly. And when I saw red flags, I didn't believe them. I, I just, I, I ignored them. And I assumed that everybody had the kind of heart that I had. And so I just didn't think that people would be out to get me or not out to get me, but having that sort of narcissistic type of attitude towards me. And I, I constantly chased things that didn't feel aligned. There was a time in Dubai where I was, when I got into the blogging world and I really wanted some sort of platform or recognition. I, I needed to have something that kind of, you know, give me a little bit of a step up in my blogging journey. And there was this company, it was a beauty company in Dubai, and they were looking for ambassadors. And this was before the whole ambassador thing came out. They were looking for five girls. There was tons of auditions and different rounds. I think I went through three rounds and I got it because what they were trying to do was to, you know, get girls from, or women, I should say, from different areas of the world because Dubai is very diverse and of different ages as well. Uh, somewhere in their 20s, somewhere in their 30s, to really you know market the products out to the masses of Dubai. So I knew I got that, and I was so happy. I was so happy. I couldn't believe they picked me. I I felt so honored. I felt like oh my gosh, this is you know my ticket to to having a bigger platform. And there were red flags with the company right away. And I knew it wasn't aligned. And what happened was they started sending me products that they wanted me to promote. 
and sometimes the products had mold on them. Sometimes the products were, I mean, they were products I would never use. It was not aligned with who I am at all. I'm the ingredients queen. And so I felt really, I felt like I was between a rock and a hard place. And I, I wanted it to work, but it just wasn't working. And I remember what they sent me this cream. It was a skin whitening cream. Now, me being literally the whitest person on the planet in a very diverse country of all skin tones, I have friends that have some of the deepest skin tones possible. I have friends, I have a lot of Southeast Asian friends. I have friends that grew up in a culture where the whiter the skin, the better. And I've always said, I'm so against that. All I wanted was a tan. So I, I could not promote any of these products. And I sent a message to the CEO of the company and I just explained why I couldn't promote them, but how I would love to work with the company to pick products that were A, hygienic without mold on them, but products that would really, that people in Dubai would really want to use and be excited about, and products that would resonate with you know everyone's beliefs, not just these ridiculous creams that I would never, ever, ever, ever tell anyone to use. And I got fired from the job and I was heartbroken. I was absolutely heartbroken because I had put all of my very little amount that I had, but I had put all my self-worth into this job. And I got the most rudest email dismissal and it really validated the way honestly I felt inside. It just did. And it was, it was, soul crushing. Now, a lot of my girlfriends say like, oh, why were you with that company anyways? It was so shitty. And you know, at the time I just, I put my identity into it, which was such an unhealthy thing to do. But I knew from the get go that it was not aligned with who I am and it was just not for me. But I, I kept chasing it and it blew up in my face. So don't choose things, especially if you're single and there's just these men out there that are making you feel a certain way about yourself or they they ghost you, then they come back, then they ghost you again, or they you know, have tons of women that they're seeing and they're making it seem like they're just at this buffet and you're just this one they may, ch they may choose or not. Forget these people. You don't need them in your life. There are other men out there that will not do this to you. And don't wrap yourself, don't give your worth away. Don't, uh, or try not to, cause you know, you could say don't, but until it really resonates. But remember that your power is your own and you are just as worthy. You are just as beautiful. You are just as special as anyone else. And if something doesn't feel right from the get go, cut it off. Don't let it keep going over months and months, years and years because it's just gonna be that much harder to cut those cords. The next one is speak positively about yourself. I remember when, I mean, I, gosh, I always trash talk myself. Honestly, I wouldn't trash talk other people, but I would trash talk myself. And I just, no one ever said to me, hey Lauren, speak positively about yourself until one day at lunch, a friend said to me, you really need to stop. And I said, what? And she said to me, you are sitting here and she said, you look incredible. You have so much going for you. And you're, and she started listing everything out and she said, but you're just, all you do is say bad things about yourself. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. I just, it was my norm. But not only was I, you know, saying this to her, but how many people have I, have I talked myself down to in my life to, how many other people have I done this to? Countless. And you know, it, that was such a great wake up call to me. And that was such a gift she gave me because I realized that I should only ever talk positively about myself, not only inside, but also outside. And you know, there's times where I've messed up. There's times where I've, you know, just haven't done the right thing or I, you know, said something stupid, whatever. At this point, I never, ever, ever speak down about myself. I'll say, oh yes, I made a mistake. Let's let's rethink it. Let's work it this way. I mean, I can acknowledge my faults, but I don't speak down about myself anymore. I always speak positively about myself. And that just getting in the habit of forcing yourself to do that puts you in such a different mindset. It changes the game. 
it changes the game. And it's something that you, when you find yourself not saying something positive about yourself, roll it back in and reframe it. And that's how you do the work because it's only going to come from you. It's it, No one can do this for you. It comes from you. So you really have to change. I remember being in a grocery store at this point. It was probably like seven years ago. And there was this really big influencer in the store. I had just seen her at an event. We were both waiting in line at the bakery section. And she said to me, oh yeah, what is your Instagram? And I said to her, oh, trust me, you don't want to follow it. It's not that good. Meanwhile, I was at home working on my Instagram all the time. It was growing like crazy. It wasn't as, I wasn't in the hundreds of thousands like her. I had maybe three or 4,000, but that's still three or 4,000 people. And I worked really hard for that. And I remember I said that to her and she said, oh, okay. And then she just left. And so not only did I not speak positively about myself, but I discredited all the hard work I had been doing. I gave her a very bad impression of me as someone who's you know, unworthy, and I put her on a pedestal for no reason at all. And her content was just, it's just entertaining content. It's not something that you would ever take. There's no depth to it, which is fine. Sometimes that's, some people are, some accounts are like that and they're great to watch. They like, let you have a little bit of escapism. But my content had a lot of depth to it. And so why would I discredit what I was doing? It was because it was a learned behavior and I had never been really taught otherwise or told otherwise. I didn't even know I was doing it. But I always will remember that. And I've told my daughter that before and she said, mom, you're crazy for saying that. And I said, I know. And I said, so you never say that about yourself. And she said, mom, I would never. And then I knew I've been doing the right thing. So we have just two more. And one of them is to realize that most people are just projecting. So what does that mean? It means that in every situation you're in, in every encounter, when you're talking to people, everyone's just projecting. Right now, I am projecting my thoughts of my experiences with not approving myself onto this video. You're watching it. I hope that it resonates with you and you can start you know, changing things in your life to to really step into a positive new mindset. But if someone says to you like, um, gosh, let me think. Uh, oh God, I, I, I'm sorry. At this point, it's been 33 minutes. For example, if someone says, I remember one time I was wearing, I was out, my hair is curly. This is literally my hair air dried. And my friend said to me, she's like, you know, one of the worst looks is pale skin and curly hair. And I was like, what? And she's the British girl. And where she comes from, the standard of beauty is to be tan and blonde. So she's always tanning herself. She's always dyeing her hair blonde. And I was like, you know what? You're projecting your insecurities onto me because here I am and I'm feeling pretty secure with how I'm looking. And why are you projecting this onto me? If someone starts yelling at you, uh, one time this um, guy in this job I had when I worked in Chicago, he one morning he just came up to me and he started yelling at me. And I was, I was so confused. I didn't know what I did wrong. Um, I was working as a uh, PA at that time, which was ridiculous because I had a degree in mechanical engineering and I took that job as a, as a very abused PA in this hedge fund company. And it was honestly, the job was so beneath me, but I felt like there was nothing else that no one else would hire me. That's how I felt. But he just was yelling at me. And I realized that he had just come out of a meeting where he had been yelled at. So he was trying to get that energy off him and project it onto me when I didn't know where the newspaper was so he could take it to the bathroom. That's literally what happened. And I remember just the whole rest of the day, I just, I carried that energy with me. I felt it. And he had literally just transferred it and projected it onto me. And people do this all the time. When I was going to college, my dad said to me, you know, you have to be a mechanical engineer. You have to go to one school. You can't transfer. This is the degree you have to get. And he was projecting what he had wanted to do with his life onto me, which sorry for him. I did do it because I didn't know I had a choice, but that is so not my personality and not how I want to spend my life. So 
you know, it's just, it's this constant projecting. And when you realize that most interactions you have with people, they're just projecting their own mindset, their own everything onto you, it really clears up a lot of the fuzziness and you realize things have nothing to do with you actually. It's always about them and it's about keeping those boundaries, setting them and enforcing them. And you will just start to stop seeking approval from others and really just create that space to self-validate. The last one is stand tall in moments that are uncomfortable. And look at these moments as, as a little test. Just think of it as you're getting the opportunity to really stand up for yourself and to be firm in what you say, what you believe in, and hold it. And it's not easy to do, but it becomes fun. Once you start, once you do it a couple times, and you get the hang of it, it actually becomes quite fun because you think, okay, this is a little challenge and I'm just gonna do it. And when you have that no BS mentality, you just don't care what's gonna become, what, the, what on the receiving side, what they're gonna say back. You know, I, um, let me think of a good, well, I guess recently when my girlfriend, she wanted to do that, that uh party or the birthday thing on my birthday you know she's a very cool girl and she has uh she has a great life great social life great everything and you know normally i would say to her like okay sure like you can have your way but i stood tall and i said no i can't do that and she pushed back a little bit but she gave in she said okay it's fine let me find another one let me find another uh night and i said okay and at first she said well it's really hard to book i just booked it on this night and i said to her like look that's my family night and i can't be going out on my birthday with you i need to be with my family and you know she's like well i don't know if i'll be able to get another night and i said okay well then we can figure out something else to do but I really appreciate you making this effort for me. And I did, I appreciate it so much, but I really, I stood tall and I, I was firm and you know what, it all worked out because at the end of the day, it's always gonna work out. And the more times you do it, you start putting out this energy too, this no BS energy. And you'll realize that when you start carrying yourself in that way, other people can pick it up. They're not gonna even try to mess with you. And I'm able to do this now because I'm not seeking approval. I, I'm not worried about what other people are gonna think about me anymore because I am so secure and happy and fine with myself that no matter what happens anywhere else, I know I'll be okay. And I can always count on myself, I can always rely on myself, and you can do the same for you too. So I hope you found this video interesting and um, I do have another video. I can't think of the name of it offhand, but it's along the same lines. Sorry, my brain is fried. So you can check that out right here.